We wanted to make New Year observances special this year, the year of the pandemic. So the CBO High Holiday Committee recommended a number of changes in our regular practice. To add a level of poignancy to the Yiska service, we asked members from our legacy synagogues to share a recollection of how a deceased temple member inspired others or inspired us to dedicate ourselves to temple life, or perhaps even simply served as a role model for the entire congregation. We chose one such recollection from each of our legacy temples, and we now share those recollections with you. Please listen carefully and remember these very best of times. We are so pleased that our candidates, Susan and Sandy Black, were chosen to be highlighted at Yiska services. Susan and Sandy were very active members of Congregation Bethel for many years. Sandy's parents were founding members of the temple and very active members also. Sandy was on the congregation board and served as president of the temple. Susan was on the sisterhood board in a variety of positions, plus being president several times. They were very warm, friendly, and caring people, and very loving parents to three children. I remember meeting Sandy at the local kosher deli, and he was very concerned about the rabbi's wife who was being treated for cancer. Ironically, Sandy died from cancer not long after our talk, and certainly at a rather young age. After Sandy's death, Susan continued to be very active in temple affairs, worked, and spent countless hours with her children and grandchildren. I always respected and admired Susan's dedication and positive attitude. Later, when she was battling her own lung cancer, I visited her numerous times. She was always honest about how she felt that day, and we spent quite a bit of time talking about her life, the temple, and her illness. She was definitely a fighter, and she remained so brave and positive until the end of her life. Murray and I remember them with much fondness. We thought of them immediately when we received word of this project. We pray that both of them are at peace together. I am Harold Lefkowitz. We joined Congregation Bethel in Massapequa in 1983 and looked to get involved quickly. Susan and Sandy Black seemed to be everywhere. Both were on the board and were involved in everything. Susan was a sisterhood president and Sandy an officer. Soon I got on some committees and then on the board. Sandy always was the instigator of discussions at board meetings, often bringing up counterpoints just so they would be heard. He was also the consummate recruiter of new blood to take on elected positions. Sandy would come over to you, put his arm around you, and explain how you were needed for the growth of Bethel. I am sure many people still hear in their head, as I do, take the position. It's only one more meeting a month. That's how he became VP under Sandy when he was president. I still think of both of them often. Thanks for the memories. Harold, you're so right. I do remember clearly when Sandy would approach somebody to bring him onto the board of trustees and they were just so unwilling and not uh, always saying they didn't have the time for it. Sandy would just say, what are you worried about? It's just one more meeting a month. Of course you can do that. It's just one more meeting a month. It's only one more meeting. It's only one more meeting a month. It's only one more meeting a month. It's only one more meeting a month. I know, it's only one more meeting a month. Sure. It's only one more meeting a month. It's only one more meeting a month. Hi, I'm Beth Corgood. My parents were Roberta and Jerry Rosen, founding members of Temple Israel of South Merrick. I'm very proud to be able to say that I am, as a member, carrying on the legacy that they started all those years ago. They were both very active in the temple, sisterhood, men's club, bingo. Favorite, bingo Wednesday nights. I knew where I could find my parents without a doubt. Saturday mornings, my father was always at services. Again, always knew where to find my father until about 12.30, quarter to one, on a Saturday morning. Growing up, the kids, once they entered Hebrew school, their favorite was going to junior congregation services with their poppy. They couldn't wait to go. 
made life easier for us. We didn't have to fight with them to go to temple. We donated a Torah in my mother's memory. The best part of that is when my kids reach bar and bus mitzvah age, they read from that Torah. I'm very proud to be able to say that we, as a family, carried on the legacy that my parents started as a little idea on Monterey Drive all those years ago. Hi, I'm Sherry Skolnick, and I'd like to tell you about my friend Janice Hiller. Janice Hiller was the heart and soul of the synagogue. Janice and Bob were founding members in 1959. This is actually a shot that appeared in Belmore Life. You can see Janice and you can see the uh, um, shovel as well and a number of the politicians that were there as they broke ground for Belmore Jewish Center. Janice was the first president of the Sisterhood of Belmore Jewish Center and she was also the first financial secretary of Belmore Jewish Center. I understand that she actually held that job for 15 years and the kids remember phone calls of her talking to people about paying their dues. So I guess some things don't change. Janice was also on the ritual committee on the board of trustees. She was in the choir. She was a founder and leader of the temple youth group. And uh, she also chaired Shabbat dinners. In fact, her house was a center point of the synagogue in many ways. Whenever the temple needed somebody uh, to sleep over because they were uh, speaking at the shul on Shabbos, hers was the kosher house. It was closest to the synagogue, and they always stayed at Janet's and Bob's. Also, everybody used to come there on the first day of Rosh Hashanah for her amazing home-baked goods. She must have had a good 200 people there with her for, for months in advance, she, she froze and made uh, homemade strudel, homemade cake, homemade imbalach, and gefilte fish. And, of course, there were schnapps for everybody. Not only the people walking home on the Legion Street Peninsula came, but everybody from the other peninsula and all around. Her family was always important to her. Her four kids were Arnie, Elise, Jody, and Gary. In 1973, they dedicated a Torah to uh, Janice's parents, um, and the kids still remember the uh, marching from Legion Street to the synagogue. You can see Rabbi Pressler in the far right corner, um, and it was a, a wonderful, wonderful dedication. In 1989, Janice and Bob were honored at the 30th anniversary of BJC uh, at the Temple Journal Dinner Dance. When we started to do Temple shows, Janice and Bob were right in there. You can see Janice and Fiddler on the Roof. I think this was around 1998. Most important to Janice was her family at the synagogue, but her amazing family. She was a wonderful wife, a wonderful mother, and a wonderful grandmother. We at Belmore Jewish Center were very lucky to have Janice as a pillar of our synagogue. Thank you.